everyone, Michael Clarizzo at the June Watchmakers Club event in London. And we're here with James Harris from the International Watch Seminar. Now you might be thinking, is this a strange name for a watch brand? Well, IWS is really more than a watch brand. Because not only can you come and visit them in their South London studio and buy a watch, but in the process they will show you how to make it. So, we're going to talk to James about this. Now James, let's talk about making a watch. We are talking about assembling a watch movement. It's not like you have people make plates and make escape plates and things. We're not making a watch from scratch. The, the premise of the, the International Watch Seminar is not to build something completely from scratch. It, we take a, a tried and tested Swiss movement, the ETA 6497, which is seen in lots of brands across the world. Uh, we finish it by hand. That's the key to it. Um, it's all about those uh, sought-after finishing techniques, which the Swiss covet. Things like uh, black polish on screw heads, heat gluing on the steel components, and pearl uh, Then we um, gold plate the movement to make it beautiful. We, um, we put a dial on top which we can customize with your name. We've got a few different options of colors, finish, either numerals or batons. Uh, and you put the watch together yourself. It's a completely bespoke watch because you're the one that's finished it. Uh, every person that finishes a watch does it slightly differently because it's all done by hand. So you get to take away something that is completely unique to you. So how long does it take to show people how to do finish? Because that takes years in Switzerland. It does, yeah. That's one of the key things. So the stuff that they do in Switzerland takes years and years of training. And we streamline those techniques so that you come along and by, uh, you come along on a Saturday morning, and by Sunday afternoon, you have a complete watch that you can take away. The processes aren't identical to how they're done in Switzerland, but you still get the same results, and that's the key for us. Okay, but can someone only do as much finish as they want? For example, if someone doesn't want a perlage on the case or on the bridge, that's fine. They can just. Of course. Okay. We've had people come across where. Um, the first process that we do, which is to grind the plates completely flat to be ready to receive the pearlage, uh, has sort of a matte finish. And they liked that so much, they kept it. So, you know, if you decide as we're going through the seminar that there's something that you like, which isn't on piece, as you say, um, it's absolutely fine, because it's your watch. And, and the watches are hand wound, they're not automatic, is that They correct? are, yes. Okay, exactly. fine. So we use the hand wind ETA movement because it's as simple as it can possibly be. You know, this is aimed at someone who's possibly never picked up a screwdriver before. So we want it to be as accessible to anybody. Um, so we go for the largest movement we can get, which is you know, the 6197 was designed as a pocket watch movement. Now with, with the trend of larger watches, of course it's fine to wear it on your wrist. Um, but we go for a manual wind because there's simply less parts. And also there's no rotor on the back to disguise the hard work that you've done. And this whole thing is the way you do the work actually was started by Till, who's over there, he in is. Mannerheim in Germany. Yes, Mannheim. Mannheim, sorry, yeah, yeah. Mannheim. And one of the reasons why it's International Watch Seminar, of course, you're British, Johan is Dutch, and Till is German. Indeed, so. yeah. And so currently we run the seminar in London, Mannheim, and over in the Netherlands as well. And of course, starting small but probably be all over the world. And where do people come from? Um, from, well, usually from those three countries. Okay. Currently, um, you know, German seminars are mostly Germans, the Dutch seminars are mostly Dutch people, and of course we're based in London, so most of the people that we get in London are, are from London or, or nearby. Um, but, I mean, later this year we're having a group come over from Canada just to participate. Great. So organizing a holiday around the seminar. Well, you have to watch out for those North Americans, you know, we can be very difficult. I'm sure. Not the Canadians, <laughs> just as Americans. Yeah, of course. Okay, now, I want to ask you about the case. Is the case always stainless steel? Could you do gold if somebody wanted it? It is always stainless steel. Okay. Um, they're machined by till in Germany, um, so they're all stainless steel, but there's different options for bezels or glasses or crowns. And how much would, say, the watch you're holding in your hands cost? 
This one, this is, I guess you could call it the entry model, and this is 1,450. Sterling pounds. 1,450. Now, yeah. in addition to the instruction you provide, do you help people find a hotel room, food, whatever? Of course, yeah, yeah. It's all part of the thing. Is that part of the price, the hotel room? Uh, the hotel isn't, but um, we basically look after you for the whole weekend. So you come along, we have lunch together, both Saturday and Sunday, Saturday night. We all go out for dinner and we all have a beer or a glass of wine and either celebrate or cry about the, the day before and look forward to the next day. Yes, I'm sure if I were there, we'd all be in tears. Absolutely. I'm very clumsy. No, not at all. Okay. It's Excellent. all about the experience. That's the kind of key thing. Um, you know, the fact that you take away a watch is, is great, but we want people to, to really enjoy their time. Don't want them to worry or stress or cry. Now, I, I'd like to ask you about another project mm -hmm. that you are tangentially involved in, which fascinates me, and that's upcycling the Apple Watch. Should we bring Till over to talk about that? Sure. Till, would you come here, please? Till from Mannheim. Yeah. Till is doing something extraordinary. First, excuse me of my bad English. No, don't worry. Look, Till, we're in London. <laughs> okay. Now, we're in London. English people think I don't know how to speak English because I'm an American, so don't worry about it. Okay. Now, Till, I'd just like to take a look at this fascinating project you're doing. Till is upcycling Apple Watches. So that was once an Apple Watch with all the mechanic, um, non-mechanical stuff, all of the digital electronic stuff inside. Yes. Of course, after six months, it's obsolete. And now you've put in a mechanical yeah, after, movement. You know, after, the, after three years, you, you don't get any support. So well, my idea is, I love the case. When it comes up through four years ago, I, I love it because they done a really good job on the design of this case. But I'm a watchmaker and I can't be a, a smartwatch. <laughs> so I decide to, if my own watch is broken, I decide to produce a mechanical movement for inside the case. Excellent. And it's, a, it's a completely indoor made movement. Bespoke in-house. In-house. Yeah. Yes. All right. Excellent. The, the most interesting part about this movement, which we don't think you'll see on any other watch, is the fact that the crown is not in the center of the watch. Mm -hmm. If you have a look at any other watch case, you'll always see that the crown is right in the middle. But of course, to keep the, the case as original as possible, the crown had to, or the, the movement had to be engineered to have a crown offset. But that fascinates me, and I'm so glad to see that happen. Yeah. Because a mechanical watch, that's good for 200 years, isn't it? Yeah, At least. It should be. <laughs> Instead of three. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Till. Thank thanks you. for that very much. James, thank you. Thank you. And I'll allow you now to return to paying customers. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheers.